Hello everyone, my name is Rumat and today we're going to analyze a Tlia mid game in Grandmaster and we're going to talk about how I generally get advantage and then use that advantage to snowball it further and by abusing some players that might be out of field or maybe not that much experienced on their role. Now in every single game in League of Legends at least one person in every team is basically the worst in the team and at least one person will sometimes get caught, will sometimes hit. It's very rarely it rarely happens those games in which everyone plays perfectly, everyone sits there, no one fails. So we're going to try to find that person in this game, we're going to try to get advantage of him and we're going to scale it there from there. Now we're against the Cassidy and Aphelios, that's some strong mid to late game. So if we are losing in the mid game against Cassidy, if he gets a lot of kills, we are going to lose the game. We're going to talk also in this game about runes, builds and everything that you need to know that I generally do on Talia mid. Basically, I play with Electrocute, Chip Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Presence of Mind, Cup Degrace and these rune stats. I'm playing with uh, Doran's Ring, but you can play with Corrupting as well. I'm going for GLP into Orb, Rabadons, all of that. I'll get even a Banshees towards the mid play game against Casting so he doesn't destroy me one versus one. As you can see, I pinged here Malphite for him to come here so that we can kill this guy but apparently he I wouldn't have time together he he would have we would have actually removed flash of this guy if he wouldn't stay here for no reason also I pinged like this because I wanted Kane to start here so that's exactly what happens basically we want to start at this they started here it's okay with trade buffs now let's do some lane phase of Tlia against Cassidy and let's see what exactly puts us at advantage now the only thing you can do early game against Cassidy is to try to get and kill on him because he later on he will just destroy you basically. So I go here, I check this, uh, I notice that he's not there. It means he's also he either at golems or goes for blue. And I start pinging my bot lane that he's around here and they should know better. But but obviously they don't even word it, so yeah. Uh, now, against Cassidy, as I said, options are to try to kill him, try to win a 2 versus 2, try to get farmed. The best one is to kill him, that's why I said only one option, because if you don't kill him, he'll outscale you regardless, right? So we have to we have to try to be as pokey as we can. This guy is a smurf for like 70% or something Cassidy win rate, and they already removed the flash on Zyra here because he did not back off. So basically this guy is pretty good, but because their jungler misplays, and we kind of take advantage of that, we are winning 2 versus 2 and we are winning against him also. He's playing with everything that he needs to sustain this lane, so it's very hard to kill him or to set him back if he doesn't play Electrocute Ignite. Some Cassidy's play Electrocute Ignite, others play Teleport and Fleet Footwork like this. So we're gonna have to try to win in other ways if we cannot kill him. So that would be kill the enemy jungler or get advantage somehow. Now. We're gonna, we're gonna push this, we're gonna be on top of CS as you can see, I'm going here to check uh, for Nocturne, I, I should wait for Vrites to spawn and then go to check there, right there proc a simple electrocute, miss a W, it's okay, it's not mandatory to hit every skill shot, it's good to actually try to be on top of the stuff. Now we see him here, we see Kane doing this. And so we actually try to go here and we don't really see Nocturne coming. So I ping to go towards this and he comes from there. No Nocturne notice this and then he will start to path towards mid immediately. And we will actually not kill the guy here because he will flash out. Then Nocturne will try to counter gank this because he probably sees me out of mana, right? So he thinks he's pretty much in for a kill here. But if you turn around on him, I proc. Uh, I hit a simple Q, flash, ignite, he flashes too late, he should have flashed faster, we get the kill. So this is how you win the 2 versus 2. It wasn't really a 2 versus 2, but I believe he did not expect me having enough damage for a full uh, combo here. Basically, I get mana for Q right now, as you can see here, the 60 mana, instant flash, instant ignite, bam, we don't stop here, I get a lot of mana from presence of mind, and I ping that we can kill this guy as well. Which means, if Kane is smart, he will try to go through the wall and dive him, because this guy, this guy has absolutely no way to escape. So he gets the, he gets this, the tower aggro, the maximum that he could, I got the maximum that I could, even though I didn't hit W, we still got the kill. So I back off here, it's fine, and I come to lane with a lost chapter, 
and Doran's ring and also the CS is even as you can see here basically I'm full advantaging on this guy right now because of the mistake that Nocturne did and this cost them a lot Nocturne not being an OTP or not being uh, high elo, as high elo as Kane maybe actually set them back because of the macro knowledge that lacks or micro knowledge and that means I could have I could get that advantage and then I could scale off that I I was seen on the word here by the way on this I was seen on the word so I moved towards here I'm not sure this is master grandmaster somewhere elo I'm not sure why they did not back off because I was seen on this exact word maybe they thought they were safe maybe they thought if I come here I could not just do this right but I come here and I do an instant alt, as you can see, cast E, then try to predict the W, and he flashed well, he waited. So we got the flash out of Aphelios, but we don't get the kill until Zyra steps in and uses Ignite, so we got there the kill, right? Now I back off, now I back off towards mid lane, and we can see that we got the kill on top lane as well, and there is a pretty nice time, can I move this? I can move this. And yeah, because Kane ganked, on top we got that now they get a kill here a simple kill and we are almost getting the kill on nocturne here but as you can see is really having some issues but i suppose it's okay and we return to our talia right here we're going to the play that actually ended the game soon not right now but soon i'm doing here this kind of moving towards the map, I'm checking for Nocturne, I'm going for the free drake because I know he was bot, I know he was low HP, right? So we can set up the free drake and then we will check a bit more for Nocturne because we noticed already that Nocturne is not that good player if he did that play on mid lane. So if you notice a player that does mistakes, it means that you can hit your W combo easily on him, it means that he might out position in macro stuff and so we actually move around here. We try to set up here a play we try to move to this bush and we wait. Now I'm pretty much sure this bush was worth it and I waited, right? Because generally when you are perma pushing this with Zyra, you were this bush or this one or this one. But because this is too far and they had no time to reach it, they couldn't worth it. And so the last chance, the smart word would have been here. So I move into this bush and I wait for Nocturne because now I know he's level 6. And Vo voila, he's coming right here. He, Nocturne at this point would have no reason to actually gank top because Malphite has ult and they would have to chain CC perfectly the Malphite or wait for a fight and that would leave the, his bot lane open and he wouldn't really gain anything from ganking a top lane a tank matchup right here right he would gank he would gain most from ga killing me or killing the bot lane killing me because I have bounty as well. Zyra has uh, also hard this uh, part a hard time escaping so his point would be to gank uh, to gank bot now he has ult he can close the gap they don't have any idea that, I, that i'm here they're botting and kane is also closing in right so let's see what happens ezreal baits in i go here i try to go for the kill onto the aphelios right so he waits he waits zyra misses everything i hit the combo on aphelios nocturne waits way too much for this i'm not sure why and this is actually a let's say this is over but it's not it's not over because we can actually easily dive now and we can cast here q get both kills bam it's fine everything looks great right no cassidy is coming and he didn't have teleport time we know he doesn't have teleport because he used it here but he's coming here and he's going to actually almost turn the game around because he has two kill setups right here for free and the rest of the two kills can be done if we are under tower but the main mistake that happened here is that one they didn't check for a word better here so i abused that i guessed where the vision was i risked that zyra put the perfect vision where to clear vision so i could step in i could have waited here as well nocturne failed because he ulted too late so we again capitalize on the fact that nocturne does mistakes right and Aphelios got caught, Zyra missed everything into the, well, the E, not everything. But then again, I could kill easily the Aphelios with a combo. We dived here easily, we got the kills, the rest of them, and now the disaster starts to happen. And I'm going to tell you in a second why I mistake. I ping, those, my, those were my pings, by the way, you can see here in the chat. I ping missing because I'm sure, <coughs> sorry. I ping missing because I'm sure Cassidy comes towards this. This is the normal path, right? This is... A path 
that you'd expect from Kassim. So he gets the free kill onto the Ezreal, he presses Q onto the Kane, he starts to auto attack me, I miss W because I panic. I cast an E under me and I back off. And at this point, we should have probably lost, if not for the fact that it was like a millisecond until Cassidy and Q came back up. He could have got the shutdown on me for a lot of gold. It's 600 here. I don't know why it's not updated. It should be 600. I'm 6 0 now. And what I do at this point? Do I recall? Normally you should. <coughs> My voice hurts a lot because I spoke too much. But what I do is I go back to mid lane. You can see it updated, the bounty updated and they also ping me. I go back to mid lane, I level up, I heal a lot from the Ravenous Hunter, because now Ravenous Hunter is fully stacked almost. I don't have kill on Maokai. So that's what I do, I go towards the Maokai, I start pinging like a main act dude, I'm coming top. There is a vision word, he's seen me, I'm not sure why the late reaction, he doesn't have flash, I know because Kane ganked him, they fought. I know all this information, is nothing new. And also Malphite has ult here, even if he has flash, he had no time to escape. Malphite actually didn't cast ult, we got the kill, and then what happens is that I will recall with a lot of gold. Here I know that Cassidy waits for me, but also, I also know he doesn't have enough burst yet to kill me, because he doesn't play with Electrocute either, so I back off. Start hitting Q here, they, they trade flashes, he doesn't have ult because he would have cast it. And then I use the combo here, I also know that Nocturnal ult is not up yet, so that's why I play like this. I also know not to overstay. Because Nocturnal Ult will be up, as you can see here on the right. I know this information. You can know this information because you use it here and you can track one minute and a half from that point. Because that's the cooldown, right? It's 99 seconds. And I now recall and you can see the itemization that I'm gonna... Gonna get straight GLP into Sorg Shoes, into almost Orb, into Potion. So that's a huge, huge gold advantage at this point. <clears throat> now what happens next is that Nocturne is here and he will gank bot lane. We don't really have vision on him. Kane will gank top lane. This is a free kill for us, because we have blue Kane right now. Already, by the way. So this is a free kill, Malphite ulted. <coughs> My god. Here we see a gank on bot lane. Israel gets flash out. And what happens here is that they actually turn the fight around for a second. But because but because Israel uh, stepped into the Aphelios ult, he died. I cast here ult. Cast here a Q, a GLP, we get the kill, I move towards the Lulu. Now, here is the mistake. I should have Q first for two times, and then, like, first Q, first pellet go out, for second pellet go out, and the last two Q, Q pellets that are very fast, I could have flashed for them. Because maybe I could have got a reaction, a late reaction from Lulu and would have killed him. Now that was a flash for flash, it's fine, I could gank him. Now... What I tell my Kane and my team is that I have a huge bounty, 700 gold on my head at this point. Also, we're against a Maokai Nocturne Kassadin comp, which can actually lock me down pretty well with 2-3 flashes, with ults, with stuff like that. So they should play to try to keep me alive, right? So that's the point. So what I do here is I move towards this point, I do a full Q. I notice that this guy is here, and then... We jump on him immediately. As I noticed the lesson before, we talked about it. We capitalize on those mistakes, on the bad player. You shoot that at every elo. In every game, there are worse players and better players, obviously. Or good players that have a bad game. That's That happens to the best of the best. You're going to see sometimes inting from the best of players. And that means if they are having a rough time sometimes in circumstances... We could make use of that. Now I back off because I have good vision set up. My team did that to ensure that I'm not inting. And now we could move towards another gank here. And we could... I tried here to actually position myself as such to wait for the Nocturne. I kind of predicted him that he would go to walls, but I forgot that he has red up. And he kind of does that. He comes to the walls. And here I move to a vision word. And what I do is that I don't immediately back off. I GLP, wait for the Lulu, and then instantly murder him. Pay attention to the fact that I instantly murdered Lulu. I, re I removed the flash of the Lulu. I actually knew that this guy is Diamond 1 or not Masters or not Challenger or something. And the difference between a Diamond 1 and the Challenger is that when, when a Challenger sees you here, he will cast if he has it on himself, but will go into range only to kill him, but not to die here. He, look, that was one step further. 
A challenger player will know that the range of Tulia W is like this and he would stay around this area to instantly step out. And that was a mistake from the player and I abused that one as well. Like, as I said, this guy is more for Master Grandmaster with a huge win rate. I'm not sure if this guy is Grandmaster, I think this guy is Grandmaster as well. But the players that are Grandmaster are not getting killed as easily or abused as easily into the kills. Now, I, I trade here as much as I can with Cassidy because the heal that I have now is insane. As you can see, I'm full HP after the trade, he's half HP. And now we can continue pushing, we can continue destroying the game. We're gonna speed up so that we don't take 3 hours to finish this video. But what basically happens is that I'll give my advantage out very, very late. Now, I notice the fact that they are coming on this guy. I go towards this. I try to get the kill here on Nocturne. I missed two pellets. And it's fine. We try to get the kill on Maokai. And then we back off so that Nocturne doesn't kill me. And so we secured again kills. Also, Kassadin came. And then Kane actually pings me so that I don't give a free kill to the Kassadin. But what I do heal is heal a lot. Heal, heal, heal from the Ravenous Hunter, when you get the head of Stelia, and even if you don't have Dark Harvest, you can get a lot of advantage through that. Now, what happens here? What do we abuse? What did I tell you back again? <coughs> I already spoke about this. Again, the Lulu and the Nocturne. Biggest offenders, Aphelius as well. Aphelius just is byproduct of bad wording, honestly, and roams and gangs from support and Nocturne. So what we did this game was ignore practically the Cassidin because we understood that he's too good to actually be easily killed. We won a 2 versus 2 against Nocturne and Cassidy. We won to bot lane in bot lane roams. And I will actually die once this game. But it's really... If you don't int like 3-4 times in a row at this point, it's very hard to actually lose. You go top again, right? We see a full combo. We easily... Almost. Take the kill. We see Nocturne coming back, right? So I back off so that I don't give the advantage. I don't care about a uh, 1-2 Malphite. I don't care that much because he has a small... He has no bounty on him. I have a huge bounty, right? So I also notice the Lulu coming around. So I ping, let's go again on him. So we abuse that as well. Again, what did I say? These are not inting on purpose. Nocturne is trying, Lulu is trying. Also, a bit of inting here from Ezreal, but I guess he escaped. Both of them actually did fine. Good ult here. We jump, we actually misposition a bit, but because Kane is here, we could actually easily take two kills. If Malf if Malfight, uh, Scotty Maokai had flash there, they could have done more. And here we back off, because Cassidy can actually, can actually kill us if we're not careful. So, even though I am like 12-0, I pay lots of respect to that Cassidy. And in order to kill him, look how much work we actually have to do. And we don't even get him most of the time. So we pay immense respects to that because we all know in this team that if I give the shutdowns to Cassidy, we're, we will lose the game. This, this works for any assassins, really, for any scaling assassin. If you give kills to a Katarina, to Zed, to Talon if they are under, if they're behind, then you're going to have a really bad time onwards and you know that. I go here, I notice the Cassidy still farming. Instant flash, instant E. I don't waste time. Some people here would not want to waste flash, which would be a mistake, honestly. Why? Look how this is. What I did here was instant, after he used ult, I knew he had ult soon. So instant EQ flash, even though my Q goes into the minion, I get with the last tick. I do this because if he would have had flash, he would have escaped, tried to escape, but not to kill me. Now, in the case that he would have had flash and wouldn't, uh, he would have, could, have, could have just escaped there. If I wouldn't, uh, if I wouldn't cast flash there, and now here is my mistake. I misposition, and they were they were actually pretty good. That was greed on me. I thought I could one shot the Lulu if I wait here in the bush. We see Lulu coming, right? And finally, after four deaths, she learned the lesson. Obviously, we get kills on the other sides on mid, but here they actually finally do something right and kill me because I did not had E right now. And so I could not cast E under myself to stop the Nocturne. But, as all good things happen, well, my team is following because they had a lot of time. I dragged them around. They had a lot of time to come here. So basically I died getting 3 kills, the casting as well, if you count it. So we're going to speed it up again because it's irrelevant because the game is pretty much over. We have two drakes. We get the third one right here. Cassidy into getting caught by a proper place worth by Zyra. And we are finally getting close to the end of the game. Build again. Rabadon's orb. 
as you can see, GLP into Sorchus into Orb into Rabadons is the order. Uh, I'm pretty much sure that you should get Vision Words in, to be in between. I move here towards this to get the Vright from this guy. I would have tried to kill him, but I wasn't really having Vision here and not space for Vision Words. And so we start this. We, we have time because there are 10 times... 10 seconds till it's this spawns. So as you can see, two times, two seconds before spawn. And then what I ping them is, dude, let's go Baron, let's end the game. And we do exactly that because we have a Zyra, we have a tank to tank it. And even though if if they get it, I don't care. They don't expect us to do it instantly after we got Herald and we got it for free. We start pushing and we are moving towards, as I said, the end of the game. You can see that we are moving mid, we are getting kills on the side lanes. They are tilted at this point because, well, of the early trades, the inting by Nocturne, Aphelios and Lulu, generally it was a bit too much. So if I played with Dark Harvest here, I would have had at least 20 stacks most likely in 20 minutes, which is a lot. But still, playing with Electrocute actually turned out quite right. We used Herald, we also have Baron. This feels like Orph at this point because you have both of them. And we see an instant ult onto the Ezreal, they got the Ezreal, but I don't mind since we kill everyone else because Kane is so far ahead they can't really do much, right? So we got the kill onto the onto the Nocturne, onto the Aphelios, and we got here this. We are backing off because we don't have any reason to risk it, I said we are backing off immediately after this. I'm not, I'm not insane, right? So we back off here. We take some more farm, and then we actually go to get uh, Morello. I, I'm pretty sure I have Morello. Okay, I actually went for Banshees instantly. I thought I was going Morello, but then I realized into the course of the game that, okay, they have 3 AP, and also Cassidy is the only one dealing damage to me, so why not go for the shield, right? And me magic resist. That's actually insane. Also, I ult here to get back to, to mid lane. They are already killed. Casted in. It's irrelevant now what happens because we won a long time ago. And look look at that. Me and Kane got so far ahead, there was, there was no reason we, we could actually lose this. And also, what I noticed at the start of the game, not in Champ Select, but after that, so when, when the loading screen happened, I used OPGG and you should every time. And I noticed that... Nocturne is actually a Lee Sin main, but for some reason, he first time or second time or fifth time or tenth time played Nocturne instead of playing his main, Lee Sin, which in the context of this game would have been much better because he wouldn't have inted that much. With Lee Sin you have escapes, you have the engaged tools with your ultimate, you are more, how can I say, you don't have that much CC as Nocturne early on, but he as a player would have had much more impact as a player. So what I advise you here is if you want to play another lane, at least have games on that champion in flex or lots of games, lots of practice in other on other champions, but don't first time stuff, be more resourceful into that. Don't be like that guy, because I see this guy, I think I have four Lustric already with one of these guys in my team every time. And even though I start the game 3-0, 4-0, like that, I lose numerous games because they can't follow basic pings or they do mistakes, macro mistakes like Lulu, like Aphelios, like Nocturne did, or they follow someone else who does these mistakes. In this game, honestly, Cassidy is the only one who actually played like someone who's master tier or above, and it seems it's it shows by his score and by the fact that he was the only one that did something in the team, the only one that tried to do something. Besides the fact that I roamed here, right, that you could you could actually do much more than misposition. You could actually do much more than they, they got actually baited by Nocturne, so he was the culprit first. But then they started inting all together. They couldn't stop, and that that's what won us actually. So you gotta play what you know. That's the end point. And as you can see, I got another kill here, going to 16, getting the end game right here. We would have won by Barons. I by the next one. We would have won by. Uh, Dragon Soul, so that would have been a lot of stuff on their plate. They wouldn't have time to actually turn it around because we also had the Cassadin jungle counterpart named Kane. Blue Kane is sort of a Cassadin yes, in terms of damage and mobility for jungle, and we countered that. We also had a Talia that actually won the game before it started, basically at minute 6, 7, 10, when Nocturnity on mid. When we ganked bot, he did the same fail. We actually 
won because of macro and micro mistakes by the fact that some people were not on their mains by the fact that some people did were maybe sleepy were maybe having a bad game and by the fact that we abused that to the maximum so that's what we did this game we actually played to our strengths but more importantly we played to the opponent's weaknesses and i want you to do so i'm drew Martin, and i really hope you enjoyed this Tulia tutorial guys Maybe it's a bit long, but I try to make them as educational as I can and see you next time, guys.